Okay, you have to check this out. According to McKinsey, AI could automate up to 30% of tech-related tasks by the mid-2030s. So how can you future-proof your career, your tech career, in the age of AI and automation? It seems like everywhere you turn, a new tool is coming out that makes your job feel, well, irrelevant. Today, I'm gonna to sit down and share with you how to future-proof your career in the age of AI and automation. All right, let's jump into, oh, before we jump into it, make sure to hit that subscribe button, like button, if you like it, and leave down in the comments other videos you want me to make. All right, now let's jump into it. The first is, of course, to adopt and learn these tools and technologies. I think the first reaction for many of us is to really shut down for a lot of these tools that are coming out and can help us with our jobs because it's out of fear, rightfully so. It's going to take your job, you hear everywhere you look on social media, and it's one of those things that, is it even worth learning to code anymore? Is it worth learning any of these skills anymore, to design anymore? Rather than starting to push these tools away, start learning to embrace them. And what I mean by that is see how they can actually help you in your job and enable you to focus on the bigger picture or bigger tasks at hand. For example, I recently shared on Instagram this clip here where it is taking a Figma design file and turning it into React code. This is such a cool platform and can be used in so many different ways. The number one question, of course, though, that I got asked throughout sharing this video is, what does that mean for front-end developers? Should I still even pursue front-end development if there's tools like this coming out? It seems like it's doing its job for me. A lot of these tools are advancing at a quick pace, but it doesn't mean that we shut down completely, you know, switch careers and fret because of AI, but rather, how can this tool enhance your workflow? All right, let's use this example. So we have a Figma file that the designer has passed on to the developer. With this React code, it's not as though you necessarily will take the entire React project and then that is the app. There is still so much that needs to be done. When you think of scaling, authentication, security, uh, and so much more, it's such a small piece of the puzzle that is actually solving. And this example can be done for countless jobs. At the end of the day, embracing these tools and technologies and continuing to upskill is the biggest takeaway, I hope, sharing the biggest takeaway from the beginning of the video, the biggest takeaway, or one of them anyways, for you to be able to really have a future-proof successful career in this new age of AI and automation. AI and automation is not going anywhere. We see the numbers of it continuing to rise. So rather than pushing it away, you have to start embracing it and continuing to upskill. Okay, the next one is develop soft skills. And this might sound like, what do you mean develop soft skills? Soft skills come naturally. No, a lot of them actually don't. When it comes to creativity, empathy, collaboration, and strategical thinking, think of all the ways that you can contribute to your team. And while AI can automate part of the technical process, it cannot emulate to the degree we are humans anyways, these human strengths of collaborating, of team building. And these are areas that even if you are a technical person, you really need to start putting an emphasis on. I recently saw in the World Economic Forum that social and emotional intelligence are among the top 10 most in-demand hard and soft skills. Focus on building these through communication courses, design thinking workshops, and more. There are a ton of different courses online that you can really start educating and exploring uh, on soft skills. And one of the best things is a lot of these courses actually have certifications. So you can get a certification. And I think a lot of us here are very tech focused, wanting to gain the next programming language or next technical skill, but don't forget the soft skill side of things because that is, what is that saying they always say? People hire people. And that's not just for business side, that is also for the tech side too. If you are able to show these soft skills and continue to evolve and develop them just like you are your technical skills, this will help you really stand out. Now, this is something that really isn't new due to AI and automation, but what I think it has done is really set apart the people who are doing this and aren't doing this, which is adapting quickly to new technologies. Gone are the days where we can really sit back and our boss tells us, I need you to start using this technology and you kind of push it off or refuse to learn it. We are living in an age where new tech is coming out every day and we need to start being able to adopt to these technologies. Now, where, or what skill can you have in here? Well, one is learning how you learn. How do you learn best? And once you figure that out, which is through a trial of different uh, learnings, whether it be through cue cards, online courses, building the project yourself, taking the time to learn how you best learn will really enhance and quicken your learning ability. This will quickly be seen when you are onboarding at a new company or even at your existing company looking to level up, get that promotion by showing how quickly you are able to learn new technology. 
Now on that note, a question I get asked a lot about learning new technology and where to put your focus is generalist or specialist? Well, let's break down the two first. When you think generalist, it is someone who is able to really work with many different technologies, pick them up quickly, and doesn't necessarily go as deep as a specialist, but has an understanding overall enough to build with these technologies or speak to them, depending on the role. You go into specialist, this can once again be technical or non-technical. You are really diving into a very niche technology. So what are the pros and cons for each? Well, for specialist, of course, the niche technology that you are developing in or working with. For example, say you are an AI expert. Right now, you would be so in demand. People would be constantly reaching out to you. Companies would be because it's really trending right now. And that might be for a very long time and a great way to future-proof your career. The downside though with being a specialist is exactly what the plus side is, which is you are focused on such a specific technology that if by chance it becomes less in demand or less popular, you are in a strange place where you either have to continue to niche down because those technologies will still be used by tons of companies. However, there may be less jobs that are hiring for that role. We've seen this a ton with different programming languages in the past and how they have evolved over time. Now on the flip side, going back to generalist, some of the pros with being a generalist include being able to adopt quickly to new technologies, get your hands in different tech, speak about different tech, whatever your role specifically is. Whereas the downside is you don't get to go as deep because you are focused on many different pieces of tech versus one technology. There's no right way or wrong way. For myself, I'm definitely more a generalist and that's what I like to do because I like that diversity. I like speaking about different technologies, learning about them, and it's worked really well for me in my career thus far. However, I do have a very, a vision of where I want my career to go and it does require being more of a generalist than a specialist. A specialist definitely has a career path in their mind as well and it's more structured as far as what titles they want next, what roles they want next, continuing on this very niche path. Once again, no right way or wrong way, but it is something very important to consider as you start thinking about how you want to future-proof your career. What technologies do you wanna put your energy into? Now, the next one I wanna to talk to you about is more something that you really have to learn to push yourself out of your comfort zone to do, which is really focusing and embracing creativity and innovation. Now, why do I say this is something you have to push yourself out of your comfort zone to do? Well, for one reason, it's because a lot of times when you get in a job or a role, you want to keep that job and role and you want to grow within it. So naturally, you do what you are told, you check off those boxes, but if you are going to be a real innovator and creative thinker, you have to step outside of those boxes, which can kind of be scary at first. Some things that you might suggest or ideas you put forward actually might fail and not work the way you think. And that brings a lot of risk, it feels like, on your career and current role. Now, this isn't always the case. A lot of companies really encourage this, but you just have to get to that point where you feel comfortable enough to share your ideas. One way I really like to do this at a company is think about it as it's your own company. And I'm not saying we have to go back to this, own it fully, it's your, your company, put your soul into this company uh, mindset, but rather think about it from an entrepreneurial standpoint. If this was my company, what would I want to see Tiff or you, whoever? you are uh, doing at this very moment. What initiative would I want? Well, I would want to see them taking a risk, taking a chance to grow out this sector of the business, knowing that it might not go exactly as planned, but at least they are putting things out there, ideas out there. And that's something that really helped me in my career is shifting from this is my nine to five, I'm just checking it off the day, getting work done so I can get that paycheck, to really embracing it and my role as how can I make this company better? What can I leave an imprint on this company that if I was to be removed from the company, there would be this missing gap that they, they would need TIFF. This is something that will really help with back to future proofing your career because what it will do is it's really showing your unique skill set, your human side of things versus just another tool that is part of the company that can be replaced by AI. And on that note, seek collaborative opportunities. When you are working at a company or applying to a company, make sure you are thinking of ways that you can get involved in other areas. We are continuing to evolve and I truly believe gone are the days where we are supposed to be in the same role for our entire career. I want to be this role and title today and then in 10 years because things have evolved and I've chosen to evolve with technology. 
my role and title will continue to grow. Now, this is probably the generalist in me speaking, but I do think regardless if you're a specialist or generalist, it's really good to educate yourself on others' roles at the company, what they are up to, and how you can help contribute to those roles. At the end of the day though, the most important thing is embrace being a lifelong learner. We are constantly going to be learning and evolving. And this will come in waves in our life. There are times in your life where you are very busy with family, friends, your social aspect, your personal life. Saying you're a lifelong learner does not equate to learning every single day 24 seven. It means being open-minded to what is coming at you with technology, new tools, new AI and, and automation and learning how you fit into that versus trying to, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, push it away. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it valuable, whether you are in your current career role and seeing all these news articles come up about AI and fear mongering titles, or if you are job hunting and feeling like, am I ever gonna get a job because it feels like AI is continuously taking jobs that I want to apply for. Focus on what you are passionate on, continuing to learn those skills, and naturally you will rise from that. All right, thank you everyone. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and I'll see you soon. Thanks everyone.